Welcome to the beer review of me, Jake. Very excited for this one. So today we're looking at two 1050s. So that's a, a 21E Oscar Blues 1050. One of the all time great Imperial Stouts. I've had it quite a few times. I haven't had it recently. It tended to be, it used to come in those big stove pipe cans over the last couple of years and I just didn't really want to fork out that much for them. So I saw these on Trembling Madness and I dropped out the chance. So, so we just did the straight up Imperial Stout and also the bourbon barrel aged version, uh, which I've never had before, if memory serves. I could have, I could have tried it at a festival or something. But yeah, so the standard version is a 10.5% Imperial Stout. Like I said, straight up, no adjuncts, no nothing. Wow, look, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> a pretty jet black beer. Almost, almost a matte black finish to it. Quite a formidable head. For, for this strength for beer. Looks absolutely fantastic. Let's go for a little sniff, shall we? Woohoo! Wowza. If I said the phrase to you, chocolate coffee caramel, you wouldn't fucking believe me, but here we are. Yes, yeah, so let me explain that a little bit. So for me, it's, it's dark chocolate initially. That was the initial rush that I got. But then it tails off into something sweeter. And it's almost got that, a little bit of that salted caramel sort of aroma to it. Sometimes like really good espresso almost borders on sour. And that's that that's the aroma I'm getting there. So it's that sort of like sour tart espresso. Yeah, so there's my chocolate coffee caramel. Oh, that smells damn good. Let's go for a little taste. Cheers. Oh, delicious. Up front, a bit like the aroma, a burst of chocolatey sweetness. Then that leads on to like a burnt toffee thing. A little, a little, a little dusting of coffee, I'd say, on there. Not, not quite as pungent as it is on the aroma. It does have a nice bitter punch to it. Do you know what that actually makes it like quite drinkable? So it, it everything sort of balances each other out. Hmm, that's damn good, sir. Let's try the barrel aged version. So I've got a slightly different glass. So I know which is which. Richie Rich. See what we're dealing with here then. So this version is actually slightly stronger. It's 12.5% and it is aged in bourbon barrels. Doesn't say how long for. I assume it's a, a little while though. But beer in the glass again. I mean, this, this is jet black. If I thought that one was jet black, this is really jet black. It's a darker, it's got like a tinge of grey in there. So it's uh, so not quite as sort of tan coloured, darker head. Let's go for a little sniff, shall we? And it, well, I must say the conditioning is pretty impressive to have that. So, some barrel aged beers, you, you crack them and the head just goes, <laughs> whereas this, this is sticking around for a little bit. Anyway, let's go for a little little sniff. Whoa, ho, 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 yes, sir. Whoa, like fortified wine. Oh, sorry, I'm going to go more. I'm going to go more poor. It is, it's got a, a bit of a a red grape edge to it. Something that's reminding me of like nougat or nugget. Yeah, honeycomb. Oh, a little bit of vanilla in there. Uber dark chocolate. Not so much. Not so much of a of, of a coffee aroma that I got with the with just the standard version. Oh, we're now starting to get a little hint. A little hint of whiskey. A little hint of the bourbon there. Oh, smells fucking good. Let's go for a taste. Cheers. Yes, yes, yes. It's funny, the, the flavour's almost coming off a little bit more muted here. But what I am getting, initially I got like a digestive, a dark chocolate digestive. Then I think that, that barrel, that bourbon barrel really starts coming through. Get that hint of vanilla. There is a slightly oaky tannic edge to it. A bit of that port thing coming through again. Then, then I'll, I must say that the aftertaste is leaving me with a, a grainy, whiskey-like aftertaste. It's, but it's damn delicious. I think for my palate, the standard version does everything I want it to. And while the barrel-aged version isn't bad, this is something you could sort of drink time and time again. And this is if you want a bit, a bit more of a, a bit more of a sipper, a bit more of a thinker. Then you go for this one. I mean, saying that they're both 
really drinkable for their for their ABVs, for their styles. And you'll be happy with either of them. But I'll go for the OG. So let me know your thoughts on 1050. Have you had it? Have you had a battle aged version too? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. But that has been everything from me on my little look into two 1050s. I've been Jake. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. And cheers. Cuvée in the mouth. I fucking can't do that.